With them setting 10th in the Premier League, Newcastle fans are starting to question whether Eddie Howe is the right man for the job. In this video, we discuss whether there is merit to this discourse and whether Newcastle should sack Eddie Howe looking at their underlying numbers and injury record. So, should Eddie Howe be sacked? Alright, let's talk about Eddie Howe then. I think while talking about Eddie Howe, it's important to first discuss Newcastle this season so far and look at where it's gone wrong. So in the Premier League, they are 10th this season. They'll be 11th if Chelsea win that game in hand, which is no given this season at all. But that's a huge drop-off, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a really poor showing for Newcastle overall, but especially domestically. I mean, they were really strong last year, and I think that's the way you always have to look at it. Fourth in the league last year overall. This year started okay, and it's got worse as we've gone on. They're now looking at just hanging on to top half, which is pretty mental. And as you say, Chelsea could go bum with them in their game in hand, and then to be beside a Chelsea side who everyone has labelled as terrible and have so many problems, that is alarming for Newcastle to be that low down the table. Yeah, I, th I think there's always going to be a, a drop-off this season because they stagnated over the summer, they didn't have a lot to spend, so they couldn't really do a whole lot of in the transfer market. And as we see other clubs rise up the table again, so Tottenham had a huge summer with Ange Postacoglu and that overhaul seen them climb back up into the top four. We saw the same with Liverpool and with, uh, with their side, they suddenly are title challengers once again. So... It was always a given that Newcastle might drop a bit. I don't think many expect them to drop as far as they have. And there are a few reasons for that, which we'll get onto later in the video. But it has been a poor season by Newcastle standards. We know they want to be pushing for that top four every year. And considering they got Champions League football last season, it looked like they won't get any Europe this year. That's a huge disparity. So it's uh, it's a huge drop off. Be much bigger than we expected. And a lot of that I think could be lobbied at Eddie Howe. Across other competitions then, they finished bottom of the Champions League group. Now, granted, that was a very difficult group, and I think you can give them some mitigation, given the fact it was a tough group, it was their first season. I don't think that's too much of a concern. I don't think too many people are looking at their Champions League campaign with much frustration. Yeah, my only thing the Champions League cha campaign is it started okay. They obviously started beat, really well. They beat PSG at St. James's Park, and was it they take a point off? They took, oh, they took a point off uh, Milan or Dort. They took a point off Milan, didn't they? Drew 0-0 away at San Siro, mm -hmm. and to take four points from your first two games in such a tough group, I think it does show that drop-off for Newcastle to go from four points in your first two games against those opposition to suddenly finish bottom of it in the after the remaining four. That's yeah. really poor. Yeah. Also, I get, as you say, it was a tough group, always be difficult in your first campaign, but the way, because it started so strongly, for me, I still view it as a pretty bad run. Yeah, I think they've been cost here by the fact that they got Champions League in their first season as a as a big side because it's a very it's a huge step up and Newcastle weren't really ready for that step up. I don't I don't think, especially given the fact that coefficient is so low. If they had a season in the Europa League where they mm. possibly would have got to they definitely would have got to the knockouts. You you would say, and then you never know from there. Do they get final semis? Even that would give them a bit of coefficient ranking enough that would see them mm. rise to. The third in that in the pots, and yeah. then you get in a potentially much nicer group. So, I think that they were somewhat hard done by there. I think actually qualifying for the Champions League was more of a curse than a blessing for them in this case. And you know, I, I think they probably could have done with a, another season to build up to Champions League football. So it's a great achievement what they did last year, but in some ways it's scuppered what they're doing this year. So it's uh, it's a it's a difficult one. In terms of the domestic cups, FA Cup quarterfinals, Carabao Cup quarterfinals, I don't think they'll have any qualms there. I think they'll be disappointed in the manner in which they went out against Chelsea, given they conceded, the, they conceded an equaliser in the 91st minute and then went on to lose in on penalties in that game. I don't think they have too many issues, though, with the FA Cup. They had uh, Manchester United, not Manchester United, New, uh, Manchester City uh, the other week. That was quite a difficult game. So it's understandable why they were out there. So I don't think there'll be too much frustration with, with those results. I think they'll be quite content with them. But within the Premier League, they have to start climbing up the table. Yeah, it's just a really interesting one. Because obviously, as you say, to be honest, quarterfinals in both domestic cups looks okay. But, That's quite and, and, strong. And it's the same with every every competition this season for Newcastle. You compare it to last year, and that's where the questions start to be asked. You know, because... Fourth to between fourth and tenth, that's a massive drop off in the Premier League from Carroll Cup finalists to the quarter finals, FA Cup semi finalists, I believe. No, semi semi finalists, quarter finalists last year, that's okay, but it's it's been a really obviously the UCL was new this year, but as you say, I feel like the big thing around 
Newcastle here is the bar was set too high last year. To, they yeah. got did they deserve that Champions League spot? Yes, they played really well. But if I look at the squad, do I think that's a Champions League side? Potentially not. You know, it, it's it's a hard one to say. I think if you to have one really good season, finish fourth, get Champions League football, was as you say, it was a bit dis- it was a, not disappointing. I it was absolutely brilliant. They absolutely yeah. loved it, but it hurt them a lot because I think you look at the sides like Aston Villa in the Conference League or. Liverpool and Brighton, the well, not Brighton, they were terrible. West Ham, conversely. West Ham. Probably the year before, best example. Yeah, you know, being in those lower competitions can help, and they are definitely yeah. more winnable. West Ham won a European trophy. That tells you all you need to know. But overall, I don't think it's horrific this year, but compared to last year, it's, there's, a, there's a massive void. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to disagree hugely on one of your points you made. You said uh, that Newcastle's squad isn't Champions League quality. I have to say I disagree. I think you've got in there players like Alexander Isak, who is one of the top forwards in Europe. You've I mean, got Anthony Gordon, who is, I think, a, a blossoming into a really strong talent this season. You've got players like Bruno Guimaraes, who absolutely deserve to be on that stage. Sandro Tonali, yeah. Joe Linton, I think could, you could even argue, deserves to be playing Champions League football. Then you've got players like Sven Botman, who I think are shoe into this sort of competition. So I, I think to say they shouldn't be playing Champions League yeah, football you know, is harsh. I, I misworded that one. I mean, I don't think it's a Champions League winning side. Like, I don't think... Whereas oh, in the, no, in the, no, certainly in not. In the Europa League and the Conference League, it would challenge for that title. In the Champions League, I don't think it, it would. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I think you mentioned squad as well. And I think that's the big issue this season. I don't want to... like We're going to make excuses for Eddie Howard. We're going to talk about where there's perhaps some shortcomings. Yeah. I think one of the big things you can let him off for this season is that they have had a ridiculous amount of injuries. They have suffered 29 injuries, which is the most of any side in the Premier League by, I think, a couple. I want to say the next one is 26. Mm. I think that's Man United, um, which they have had a lot. But Newcastle have had a lot of injuries. And you can sympathise with that to a certain extent because... They, you know, 26 injuries, that's more than an average of one per player. Yeah. So you can you can understand the frustrations there. You've also coupling mm. that with the ban for Sandro Tonali, which is yeah. something they couldn't really have seen happening. So I can understand those those circumstances, but I don't think they're enough, those, uh, those extraneous circumstances, to really warrant being as low as you are in the Premier League. Yeah, I think the one thing, the injuries, and obviously there's some clubs in the same situation don't come attack us. But the big thing for Newcastle, I think the problem has been, is that the injuries are all, most like, the injuries have all been in the same areas. You know, we saw Isak and Wilson out at the same time. Midfield-wise, there's a reason Lewis Miley got called up, because all the midfielders were injured. It's Oh, and Tanani. And Tanani going bad. But it is that problem where they have had so many injuries in one concentrated area, it has massively impacted them to the point where they're calling up youth prospects, playing players out of position... It's a far from ideal scenario to deal with. However, it's still a very decent side and they should be doing better. Yeah, and then you couple that with the fact that I think there's a lot of Deadwood still in Newcastle's squad and that's something they haven't been able to tackle because of their FFP issues, because they've spent, they've spent so much money and the players that were, were there aren't really sellable assets. So that's going to take time for them to mm. integrate change to that Newcastle squad. So unless they sell someone like an Isak or Botman, they're not going to have a load of expendable cash this summer. So that's something they've got to try and f- to try and do slowly over time. You've also got... Because I would say players like Emil Kraft aren't really players that does in this squad anymore. Matt Ritchie has played a fair few minutes this season. Even Jacob Murphy, which I think is harsh because he's done well when he's been called upon. But... If you're a team that wants to be wants to be competing for Champions League places and that want to be playing in the Champions League every season, they're the sort of changes you've got to make in the squad. But I will say, Newcastle this season have had a very high amount of yeah. injuries. So I definitely think you can make an excuse for Howe there. Where you can't really make an excuse for Eddie Howe is the, the manner in which they seem to fall apart later on in games and against weaker opponents this season. They've had quite a few matches. And I think that Chelsea game paints the greatest picture because they were arguably the stronger side for most of that match. And yet the final 20 minutes, the tide swung really in, or the pendulum swung, the tide turned in Chelsea's direction, Chelsea's favour. And that, there was a huge difference. And Chelsea went on to win that game. If Newcastle had gone on, got another Carabao Cup final, I think there'd be a lot more positivity around the camp at the moment. But I personally don't think Eddie Howe warrants a sacking. Personally, I think that Newcastle are heading in the right direction. I think a little bit of a drop-off this season was always expected. Yes, that drop-off has been worse 
than many predicted or would have would have foreseen before this season. But I still think there is a lot. I still think Eddie Howe is a very good manager, and I think there's a lot he can achieve when he's got a, a fully fit squad and a bit of depth there. So I don't know if just sacking him is the greatest option, especially since how volatile the manager market is this summer. Mm. Yes, on one hand, you've got so many options right now that are available. So yeah. could you capitalise on that potentially? But on the other, there's going to be so much movement, so many people going around, that stability might just aid them yeah. next season. So do you have any stuff for to think about? What, what do you think? Do you think Eddie Howe being sacked will be warranted or do you think he deserves uh, to keep his job? I think it's an interesting one. I and At first, I, I always think that, you know, the man that took them to the top should be the one that gets them back to the top. Um, yeah, okay. Obviously, sometimes that doesn't work. The Jose Mourinho at Chelsea. Um, but it's, it's, it's an interesting... Because I think from a Newcastle point of view and, and from a world of football point of view, what matters now is results and performance. And right yeah. now, Newcastle aren't delivering that. And I think if Newcastle, what the new owners are to go, right, Harry solved this problem, I feel like Howe will be the one that will take the fall for it. I also think, and this, this is something for Howe to think about, I think even if they don't sack him and keep him to the end of the season, if England decide to let go of Gareth Southgate and they come to yeah. Eddie Howe after this seat, after this pretty poor season they come to Eddie Howe and say will you be England manager I think he'd take it yeah so I think it's something to think about for Newcastle is do I think he should be sacked right now probably not but do I think he's the man that is going to carry them and keep them go keep them you know carry them back to the top and keep them there I don't think he's I don't think he's in it for the long run or the long like the I think he's here for the near future, yeah. but I don't know if he's here for the, the, the further, further on. That long haul. Yeah, I think... Well, let's look at the data, because you mentioned their performance for Newcastle. And actually, based on expected performance this season, Newcastle should be fifth in the Premier League. Now, that paints a very different picture mm. to the one that we're painting at the moment with 10th in the Premier League, out of the UCL, knocked out of both cups. That looks quite, quite disastrous for yeah. Newcastle. But expected points has them fifth in the table. They've underperformed by five ex- expected points, despite the fact they've overperformed in XG and XGA. Mm. So again, that will come down to game state. Basically, looking at those numbers, it would suggest that they are scoring goal. They're scoring more goals than they're supposed to in games where they're dominant. But perhaps there's a couple of games where they've been the better side and not got the result. Yeah. So there's uh, there's a, that's quite interesting to see. I think you've also got to look at the fact that. West Ham, uh, Tottenham and Manchester United have all overperformed massively. Now, Manchester United have overperformed the most with 11 points more than they should have got. Ludicrous. Uh, Tottenham with 10 points more than they should have got and West Ham with 9 points more than they should have got. So, I think you can paint a very different image based on how you view this season for Newcastle because if you focus on the injuries, you could say, well, Howe's actually a really good coach, they're a really good side and there's a lot of upscale there if they stick with him and if they can have a fit squad. Or you can look at it based on purely the results and say they're 10th in the Premier League, that's not good enough for what Newcastle's ambitions are, how has to get the axe. I think there's arguments to be made either way. I think the biggest question is what, where are Newcastle going? Because there's obviously the money's coming from the Saudis and the goal seems to be we want to win the Premier League title, we've got to win the Champions League title. And the biggest question is, one, how realistic is that in the short term? And two... No pun intended with how, by the way. But how is how the right man to take them forward? The other two questions you've got to ask is is you know where's that short term, where's that long term goal? I think the problem for Newcastle was is that last season, as I said earlier, they set that bar so high in a year where every, they took advantage of the fact that everyone else was underperforming. We had Chelsea, United, Liverpool, Tottenham, all down lower than they should be. And I think this the prob this is the this is the problem is and that is what is expected. But yeah. for me, when everyone is at the top of their game, Newcastle aren't that team that are going to get top four. They aren't that team to win the league. They aren't that team to get into Europe. If if we're talking about having every team on the top of their game, they they're not that team. And the problem is they seem to not. Obviously, some I think they need to realise that they need to realise that actually we aren't on the level of those elite sides yet. And obviously that's a big yet because the investment that they have 
could put them there eventually, but I think short term aim should I don't think you could be attacking the Premier League because I I just don't think they are of that quality yet to challenge right at the sharp end when you when you know Liverpool have come back now you know, United are somehow in sixth joke uh, Tottenham are back with Big Ange God knows what they're doing at West Ham uh, Villa yeah, I don't know what Moyes putting really in the wall strong yeah. this year and I think the problem is Newcastle have been affected by that the other thing is. As results have got worse, the morale has dropped significantly. And this is the one thing how did so well last year is that Newcastle side were like a rock. They went into every game knowing that they wouldn't concede. That defence was incredible, not only because of the quality in there, but the way they worked together as a yeah. unit. Now, as soon as they concede, they've lost the game because they go 1-0 down, their heads go. It is ridiculous. There's a couple of things you can look at. I think you can say that... I think one positive for Howard is that he doesn't appear to have lost the dressing room yet. There's not too many reports of there being disgruntlement in the dressing room. I think there's still support there for Eddie Howe. I think that there is... I think that a big reason is that Kieran Trippier hasn't been at the same level, which is understandable. He's now 35. There is going to be a drop-off in his performances. And actually, perhaps p- p- placing increased importance on Tino Livramento yeah. could be a really good idea. I, I, it's going to be interesting with Newcastle. For, in my opinion, they should be looking at 2030 as a sort of realistic target for when they should be fighting for the Premier League title based on investment. Mm. I think in the short term, Eddie Howe is more than capable of, of bringing Newcastle into those European places consistently and of cultivating a really good squad. For me, Eddie Howe is not a Premier League winning manager and Eddie Howe is not a Champions League winning manager. Now, that can change. He can get better at his job. He can have a really good Newcastle team. All sorts of things can change where he does become a realistic yeah. opportunity to win the title. I don't think Eddie Howe will be that man, but Newcastle aren't in that position yet. So, for the short term, I think he's fine. You've got to start investing in young players and then hope to develop them and move them on for money for Newcastle. They've got to have de- develop that Brighton model for a little bit of time for them to raise some capital, to be in a really healthy FFP position, to be able to seriously spend that money and look to push into those Champions League places and look to get the Premier League title. Because Sony money can get you a lot of things, but it can't really sort out your FFP issues no. because that's not revenue. No. You just, oh, here you go. There's another 300 million from the owners. So I think that, yeah, there's a lot to be unpacked at Newcastle. I think, though, that for now, how is as good as you're going to get I don't really yeah. see a, who would come in and immediately take that step forwards because whoever you're going to bring in is going to want to develop their own squad and they don't have the money to do that right now in Newcastle. Not literally, but in terms of that FFP budget, they don't have the ability, the manoeuvrability in there to be able to make wholesale changes through that, the squad. So I think Newcastle are current, a bit stagnant at the moment unless they're going to sell someone like Isak or, or Sven Botman, which yeah. I don't think is a very good idea, or Bruno Gimenez as well. All options, I don't think it'll be a very good idea to to sell any of those. No. So, yeah, that is, should Eddie Howe be sacked? Our personal opinion is no. Are you agreed with that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we don't think he should be sacked. I think there will be a lot of people under this video that probably do think that he should be sacked. So give him in the comments below and give your thoughts on the matter. If you want to keep watching our content, there's going to be a video on screen right now covering Harry's face. What did we talk about last week, Harry? We talked about... Why Premier managers should we give him more time? Wow, so coincidentally, a complete reverse. Oh, no, well, sort of in sync with today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, go and watch that from last week on screen now. That's everything from us today, though, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.